Hi, uh, this is Paula Januszkiewicz. Welcome to Secure Hacks Weekly. Uh, today we will be talking about a um, couple of things, actually five things, what to do after hack. So interesting places uh, which you can look at uh, in order to find the evidence. So before we start, uh, I got a little story. Uh, we've been uh, taken as a team uh, that will do the forensics in one of the factories uh, producing some kind of things. And uh, it appeared that a couple of the main controllers and a couple of servers, but the main controllers particularly, they were all brought down at the same time. And the company was wondering what actually happened. At the end, it appeared that that particular factory was sabotaged by one of the IT employees. So our goal was to find out what happened and by finding the interesting evidence in a couple of places, we managed to figure out that this was actually this person performing these malicious operations. So lesson learned, what is important is uh, first of all to know what are the interesting places to find um, not only the evidence, but also some traces of some uh, activities, some operations. This can be useful for you when you are investigating some uh, things internally in your enterprise. In today's episode, uh, I would like to show you interesting places in Windows operating system that you can have a look at in order to find out, for example, the post logon information, information about what kind of software was running, information about which files were opened, uh, information from NTFS journal, uh, what kind of files or file metadata was modified and, and if it was modified, and also a couple of other interesting uh, places which can indicate that something was wrong. Okay, so let's get started. Okay guys, so you should see my screen right now and um, what is the first uh, place? Well, first place it's um, maybe uh, quite uh, natural to check because uh, that's going to be the profile list and the profile list indicates us uh, where I'm listing right now the files from the disk um, it indicates us of course what kind of users were logging on to the certain box but that is not really uh, true yes because th the only thing we see over here it's a profile folders but what about if we list sits from the registry so SIDs from the registry uh, where we are able to spot different types of SIDs of the users that were previously uh, created here and that list is uh, quite quite more interesting it's a little bit longer so what we can do from the registry from um, the following path so local machine software Microsoft Windows NT current version and profile list we are able to list also the details uh, recording history of what kind of profiles were created here and one of the things that you see that we couldn't see before it's a user hacker so this is the place where um, we can find quite interesting data regarding the history of course of the profiles of course uh, someone could be smarter and delete this data from the registry absolutely but this is something that is uh, uh, worth to check another place that is worth having a look it's of course prefetch and prefetch is system-wide and uh, prefetch allows us to uh, spot what kind of different types of executables were running in the following operating system if we uh, do a dir um, for the pf files uh, here uh, for example well i got some examples in my folder this is notepad but uh, basically prefetch is whenever we go to um, c windows prefetch and if we run the same command Yes, then there is a plenty, plenty of different types of files that are worth uh, analyzing. Okay, let's go back to our place where we've got our uh, tools. Uh, by the way, what is pretty interesting here, have a look. Uh, whenever we've got a PF file, the last date uh, on the file is the one that indicates when was the last time this file was actually running. Yes, so I can see that I was running Winamort um, on the 17th of October. Okay, so um, when we are over here the for analysis, I'm going to use our tool, which is called CQ Prefetch uh, Parser. And CQ Prefetch Parser takes as a parameter, for example, the file. Eventually, um, we, can, we can specify only the directory that contains the prefetch files. We can specify also the out 
where we are able to decompress uh, the PF file, we will uh, use the, um, the basic setting here where we will specify the file and then we will specify minus A to analyze. Let's do it. So we've got our CQ prefetch parser, we will specify a file, we will specify our prefetch file over here, uh, and we will do minus A to analyze, and that shows us very nicely all the interesting um, paths that were related with that particular prefetch uh, file, also uh, modules loaded, so different types of DLLs uh, that were loaded when this particular executable was running, also, and that is pretty cool, you can see a part of the history, like how many times notepad.exe was executed and what was the last time I was actually executing it. So that is pretty cool because it shows us how many times, of course, and the history of when this particular software was running. Okay, guys, so next part, it's uh, quite interesting too, and I would like to show you uh, within uh, my uh, toolkit, uh, the tool that is called RD Cache. It's a very simple tool, it's also our tool, uh, where we are able to load, so this is the uh, third thing to show you, um, when we are able to load the terminal server client cache, and this is in every profile. So as you see, I've got an administrator update the local and so on. So this bin file, it's quite an interesting file because we are able to analyze it a little bit. So if I do decode it, it shows me uh, the pictures in the grid that were collected where we are connecting using uh, well, remote desktop services so or terminal server, um, terminal, uh, terminal client. And basically, um, we can of course change the kind of a resolution of the grid uh, according to, to your needs. Uh, or sometimes uh, just to make it a little bit more clear and we can spot over here all the interesting things that someone saw when this person was connecting to the remote server and of course it's not uh, super clear because it depends how you move the window without within the remote um, desktop session but uh, over here you can spot that uh, well guess what was that yes i'm i'm looking forward to get your information in the comment uh, under this blog post yeah so what the user could see uh, when the user was uh, connecting another interesting thing is that we can see it's automatic destinations and within automatic destinations we are able to spot uh, different types of uh, files that were opened within the software now have a look, I've got C users, Pula, Updata, Roaming, Microsoft Windows, recent automatic destinations, and this 9B9C indicates us that we're going to be opening actually a stuff that was opened within Notepad. So uh, why like this? Because these identifiers are known. In the blog post, I will post a couple of places where you can find which identifiers represent uh, which uh, software. For example, over here, I'm able to see that uh, in the desktop I was opening gfi.txt yes so this is uh, the whole history ever ever of all the interesting files that you were uh, opening for example in notepad and of course if you jump farther then you will be able to see uh, a little bit more what uh, user ever opened in that particular software yeah, so this is quite interesting. Uh, of course, uh, not every software that you are uh, using is uh, known. So then you just need to browse through all of the automatic destinations, but some of the identifiers are already predefined. So as we mentioned, 9B, 9C and so on, this is something that indicates us Notepad. The last interesting thing that I want to show you, it's uh, related with um, USN journal or NTFS journal, where we are able to find information about uh, what was the last uh, well, time uh, that the files were accessed, but I want to show you something interesting. First of all, what we're going to do, we're going to display all the interesting um, places uh, in that particular F drive uh, from, the, from the files perspective. So over here, we've got here, uh, for example, F data 1.txt, but we've got also much, much more files if we do, uh, if I go to data, uh, for example, and if I do dir, you can see that there is so much, dif so many different types of files. So I am displaying right now file hash for these files and I'm grouping them. So by running this command, we could clearly see that all these files are the same. Of course, over here, I'm able to spot as well what is the last write time 
and we can see that this is all the same. Yes, yeah? so we've got one dot txt, ten dot txt, and so on. So this is all the same. And uh, what I want to show you is that when we, for example, do get member for um, the options that we've got related with time to work on the files, we've got here creation time, last access time, and last write time. And have a look here. We've got get and set, which clearly indicates that this is not um, something that we should rely on, since we are able to set creation time, last access time, and last write time. So what's my point? Is that basically we are able uh, to change one of those files. And um, let's have a look what's going to be what's going to be the setup. So let me show you one thing in the folder. So as you can see, all these files are the same. So what I can do right now, I can change, for example, for this one, this is fake data, why not? So save, very good. And um, over here, we can see that this is 2016. But what I will do, I'm going to override that data by um, just using this set option within the PowerShell. So let's do it. And um, we got it. So we are right now specifying that um, this one.txt, yeah, so all of the other files should be exactly the same, yes, as in uh, and all, all, all the other files should be exactly the same as one.txt. And we are for each file, we are changing a last write time, creation time, and so on, last access time to that particular time. So let's have a look what's the uh, result. And as you see, all of my files right now are from the current date. So uh, this is something that we can rely on, but we cannot uh, rely um, very strongly because uh, as you see, this is something th that can be changed. Okay, if we uh, move further, what we are able to see from the history perspective, uh, and I'm gonna use for example, for, for, for that purpose, FSUtil that everybody has access to, we're able to read information about um, the journal and for that I'm going to use as you see FSU till USN read journal and uh, for the F drive and that gives us a very nice quite long output about what kind of changes were made on the disk of course that's a lot of information that's why in the internet you can find a lot of different types of parsers that can help you to parse that uh, data but uh, if we uh, interrupt this, what we can spot over here is that file 430 txt. We had basic info change, and here from the from that uh, from the FSU to US and Read Journal, we're able to see basic information about that this file uh, was something that someone worked on. Of course, more information we can spot in the a little bit more professional journal analyzer. But I want to show you a free option that can at least indicate that something was done with this file. And in the worst case, you can stream this data into a text file and then search for the file name and see if this file was in um, any matter touched. Yes. So this is um, US and journal that we are able to analyze. Okay. So we have just uh, spoken about all the interesting uh, five, um, maybe even unobvious places where we can search for the data after the attack. Okay guys, so I hope it was interesting for you. We have covered a couple of places where we can find the evidence, but there are hundreds of more places like this, which I really hope I'll have a chance to talk about in the next episode. If you are interested in particular subjects, make sure that you're gonna post some comments about it in the comments section and uh, hopefully see you again in the next episodes.